Alright, so this is a follow-up to the Basics Part 1 video that was done on Golden Sun No Save and Quit tutorial. I realize there are a few topics that I neglected to discuss that are probably pertinent to discuss, such as all these lovely things here. Um, so we'll kick straight off into it, hopefully this won't be as long as last time, but first thing I want to discuss is synergy shortcuts, and we touched on this last time. Two ways to short, shortcut your synergy. The first way is to press L and hotkey. The, the other way is to press select to actually go to the thing where you're actually going to use it. Hold select and set, sh set the shortcut. The select method is my preferred way of doing things, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. The select method is slightly slower, but I find it more convenient, so I do it. The next thing that I didn't touch on is when you should. When should you? hockey thing. So the rule of thumb is that if you have to use a synergy three times in a row, is, or three times um, sequentially at some point, it doesn't have to be in a row, it usually is faster to set it as a hotkey rather than uh, use it from the menu. Twice it probably draws about even, three times is where it really is, is worth it. Through most of the speed run, that means we're going to have move and, and retreat on hockey, but you can have other things on hockey such as uh, frost, or, or douse in Suhala Desert, things like that. So just keep that in mind. If you feel like you can do the, the synergy routing in a more effective way, then by all means, uh, do whatever you feel is best. Okay. Now we should talk about draining PP. Draining PP is something that you'll have to do at various points in time, so you can set up for the retreat glitch. So it's important to understand how can you drain PP as fast as possible. I'm actually going to jump ahead to this, this, um, no, I'm not. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> so the fastest way to say to drain PP is a technique called move cancelling, which is something that a guy by the name of FX found. So basically, if you cast move on an object and then cancel it, that is the fastest way to drain synergy. Uh, it is very, very quick. It's faster than any other method that we know, aside from like healing um, with with cure and whatnot. Cure is obviously very fast. Cure well is even faster, but you can only do that finitely many times. Um, say if you're in Lamakan Desert, it's very easy to do a bunch of cure wells to draining your PP, but you're not always going to have access to be able to do that. So to illustrate how quick this is, I've got 20 PP now. Let's see how fast I can drain it. Just mashing L and B to cancel it. There we go. We've drained all our PP. Fantastic. So generally in the speed run, if we can find, if we have to train our PP for something, or if we have a retreat walk coming out that we have to s uh, drain PP for, usually we'll try and do it on a pillar if we can. We're not always going to be able to do that, but it's good to know. Your next best option is actually spamming growth for two reasons. The first reason is that you're in the Brute series. Brute series innately has less PP than the Squire series, which is the Mono Elemental Venus class for Isaac. And the second reason is you have growth. Growth is relatively efficient to drain PP. As you can see, I'm draining it relatively fast. So that's your next best option to drain as much PP as you can. Usually you will have to hotkey it to get the maximum effectiveness, but that's not too big of a deal when it comes to draining PP, right? Like, if you have to do it, you have to do it. The last option is to use Frost. Frost is marginally faster than growth, um, but Usually you, you won't need to, need to use that. Usually you can rely on curing or, or move cancelling. Um, but frost can be quite helpful. It's, it's useful to keep that at the back of your mind. Okay, moving on. PP and Gin Recovery. It turns out that both PP and Gin Recovery work on the same counter. So we've previously seen that encounter rate is uh, something that increments in the overworld. You can see encounter rate is incrementing right now. We've got an encounter, that's unfortunate. And it resets upon changing area. It resets upon um, getting an encounter. Um, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't um, it doesn't reset within an area. So let's get through this. Let's get past this stuff. Gonna scooch around. <laughs> Alright, see, okay, so encounter rate is ticking up and it's preserved as we go into a different era, different part of the same dungeon. So PP and gen recovery 
live on a connected counter that works entirely separately to encounter rate. So you can see here under Isaac PP, I've got this thing that says PP regen. That is the PP regenerating counter. Every time that gets to 16, it will increment one. As you can see, I've gone from four, and now I'm at five, and so on and so forth. Every time you get a tick of PP regeneration, one of your gin that's on standby will also recover. So every tick of a gin, you get one PP regeneration as well, and vice versa, obviously. Now PP regen works differently to encounter because it is not retained when you transition. So I had 16, and as I transitioned into a different room in the same dungeon, it reset back down to zero. So sometimes you'll be like crossing through a room and you're like just before getting a gin recovery. Sometimes it's worth just to wiggle in front of the door so you get the tick of recovery and then go down the stairs or go through the stairs to get to the next level just so you're guaranteed to get that gin recovery less like to get hit by an encounter and have something bad happen. One other important thing about PP regeneration that is kind of not really known is that if you jump it actually increments your PP regen as you can see I've gone from seven it goes up four so it goes up four ish or three and a half every time you do a jump so that can be quite useful because usually jumping isn't going to incur you much encounter rate so if you just do a bunch of jumping between these two things it will increment your PP and encounter region. It doesn't look like it. You can see here that my PP is still 8. But if I take a step, you can see it jumps to 12. So that can be quite useful to generate a bunch of PP without generating any encounters. That, that can be really, really helpful. Um, of course, PP regen and uh, PP and gen recovery continues to accrue in rooms without encounter rates. So as you can see, this room doesn't have encounters and I'm still recovering PP and whatnot. So knowing where these areas where you're not going to get encounters are is quite a quite a useful thing to know. So you can just play it safe, get the get the gin back, and so you can continue your summoning and so on and so forth. Next thing I want to talk about is class modifiers and PP rege uh, regeneration. Because as I mentioned, PP regen and gin recovery are inherently linked in that you can only recover a gin if you've also recovered a PP. So sometimes you're like, I have five PP. Ah, I can't use retreat. Let's wiggle around and then bang, a gym recovers and then you try to use retreat and it still fails, right? What's happening is that every class in the game has a certain percentage modifier on each of the stats and you can very plainly see it here. So when Forge is on standby, you can see that my PP increases to 14 and that's because I'm in the Squire series and the Squire series has a more a greater PP multiplier than uh, the Brute series. It can be useful to know that the the way that you can maximize Isaac's PP is by putting him into the Apprentice series, which is the series that comes from uh, one Jupiter Jin. As you can see, I've gone up to 22 PP, so sometimes you'll be on 5 PP and be like, ah, I just can't recover that last PP to get to be able to trigger re re retreat or whatever, in which case, swap over a Jupiter Jin, you can almost always be guaranteed you're going to be able to, to use uh, retreat which is really 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 helpful sometimes it goes the other way sometimes uh, a gin recovers and uh, something that used to be above six is uh, maybe you had six pp you took an extra step and you're like oh, it's okay i can still use ret use uh, the retreat glitch or whatever and then it, it, it messes up something like that the point here is that the game uses rounding, so all of the percentages or percentage bonuses you get on each of your ability or each of the stats when you change class is also subject to a, a rounding effect. So it, you're not always going to get nice whole numbers and that can have some very strange effects on what happens to your PP when Jin recovers. So to illustrate, lots of words, not a lot of explanation. Let's see. You have 22 PP here. If I set Flint, my PP is going to drop to 20. If I put him back, it goes back to 22. Fantastic, no problem at all. I'm going to use one move. So now I have 20 PP. If I put Flint on standby, I go down to 17 PP. Note that I've lost 3 PP now instead of 2. If I set Flint, I'm back to 19. So, at varying PP thresholds, setting and standbying certain gen will cause you to lose a PP due to rounding error mistakes. 
which is kind of a pain, but can be kind of useful at the same time. Sometimes, for instance, uh, in this situation here, I have 22 PP, so I'm draining my PP like I normally would. And let's say I wanted to make sure I had 5 before I go through into the next room. About 6 PP, if I go quickly sit, stand by, I have dropped 1 PP. So that can be a useful trick to keep in mind when you're trying to manipulate your PP, just to get things just right. Very useful uh, in the save and quit categories, but occasionally useful here as well, thinking to places like Lama Khan Desert or even uh, Venus 2 where you're trying to get your PP into the right place. So just be aware that when Jin recover, your PP can change, so if you're counting on something happening, make sure you double check it, or if you're manipulating it like I have here, then you know this is something that you can do. The last thing I want to touch on is this flea chance mechanic. So flea chance is kind of interesting. So flea chance is basically based on your party's average level and the enemy's average level. So in this case here, I have Isaac at level 4, Garrett at level 3, Ivan at level 4. So what is my average level? My average level is like 3.666 or something. In this case, the game will keep your level average to two decimal places. So 3.67 would probably be my real average here. If I get any old encounter, let's get an encounter. These guys here are like level 8, I want to say. Yeah, level 8 looks about right. <laughs> I have to do the math. So the way that that would work, let's say these guys are level 8. So my party level is about 3.66. Um, let's fill in the blanks down here. So my party level is 3.66, the enemy level is 8. The difference between the two is going to be about... Let's put this 6, 7. It's going to be 4.33. Now that we know the, their level difference, what we can do is multiply that by 5% and add that to 50% to get the, the basic flea chance. The basic flea chance is going to be, in this case, 50%, sorry, this is not 4.33, this is minus 4.33, plus minus 4.33 times 5, that's going to be about, really put my math to the test, about 27.5%-ish, uh, <laughs> thereabouts. Maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm off here, maybe this is 9, because you can see this is 22.6. It's going to be 5, it's going to be 5, that's 22.5, and there you go, that's about what my run percentage is here. The run percentage here is not calculated exactly, so don't worry about that. It is possible for this number here, it is possible for that to be less than 0, and that is important, and the game does keep track of the fact that it is less than 0. We'll come to why that is the case very shortly. So, um, yeah. That works out the, the the flea chance. Now there is an additional thing that the game keeps track of in order to calculate your flea chance. That is the number of times you have fleed. So every flea fail, you get a bonus 20% chance to flee. So that's actually kind of helpful. So just as we're here, see here, I'm gonna run away, it doesn't work. So watch my run percent. In the top right there, I've got run percent 22.6. The moment I run away, it jumps up to 40.6. So it's a plus 20%. Again, this isn't quite accurate, but that's fine. So every time you fail, it is statistically more likely that you will run away. Very useful fact. It means that if you failed flee twice, the correct strategy is to try and flee again, because you now have plus 40% chance of whatever you had before. And, well, it's just the right play. It may be incredibly risky, but it's still the right play, because it is the fastest way to leave that, most likely the fastest way to leave that fight. So as I said, this number here can be negative. If this number is negative, then you just add 20% to that negative number. So if it was like negative 10% chance to flee, add 20% and that's 10% chance to flee now. At the end of the game, the mobs are level 28, and you're about level 16 to 18 or so, so you have 0% chance to flee, 
Um, but every time you flee, you can get maybe like 20% chance. But we don't flee at that point because it's just too dangerous. But anyway, case in point. So the final thing then to talk about in this video is avoid mechanics. So the avoid mechanics are kind of basically the same as the flee chance. See here how flee chance here is negative, but all the, the enemy, the level difference is negative. If the level difference is positive, I should say strictly positive, so greater than, greater than zero, like strictly greater than zero, then avoid works. So that means your party level has to be above the average enemy level for the area. Now each area has a hard-coded level average built into it, which in Golden Sun 1 very closely aligns with the, in the average level of the enemy encounters in that region. However, there are a couple places where that, that changes. Um, treachery is probably the, the only noticeable instance of this. Uh, and we'll highlight those, those specific thresholds that are relevant once we get to them in the video series. Um, but in the Lost Age, the avoid mechanics are exactly the same, except the level thresholds don't line up at all with the average enemy level, which is kind of frustrating. Anyway, point being, as long as the, the above the average level for the area, avoid will stop all encounters from happening, which is really, really powerful and is only really applicable twice in this speedrun because we're so low level through the whole thing. In TLA it's applicable a few more times, but that's a different game. Alright, so we've covered all of the things I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, after this video, we'll kick into the, the uh, intro video, uh, which is actually recorded for this one. So I've actually explained the fleet chance stuff twice, but that, who cares? Anyway. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video, hopefully this series has been really helpful and you're learning a lot. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.